Hi friends, welcome back. So today we are going to be doing just a few plant chores. Um, I don't have too much to do, but I want to kind of look at some of my plants that aren't doing so well and see if I can rehab them. And some of them need repotted, so let's just get into it. Okay, so if you saw my plant tour video, um, you would have seen this plant that is not doing so well. This is a Begonia First Kiss, I believe. And I explained kind of what I thought I did wrong in the last video. So I think what I've learned is to just not, um, not try, is to just leave my plants alone when they're doing well. And so this just a lesson I learned and next time I will know not to do that. So I am just going to clean out this pot so I can reuse it. Um, unfortunately, there isn't much that I can do for this plant as far as rehabbing goes, but that is okay. The next plant I have is my little Hoya Carii that, again, if you saw my plant toy video, you would have seen, I actually noticed that this piece broke off because it has, who's writing on my hand, because it has root rot, um, which I'm... I'm not upset about as far as myself doing anything wrong because the plant just came in the mail a few days ago and the soil was pretty moist, which normally Hoya prefer to have moist soil, but I think that this one just wasn't in good condition when it was shipped out or it got damaged somehow during shipping. So I am still happy that I have this one, but I want to take a look at the roots and just see that they're doing okay. Well, I found the rest of the stem from the other cutting that you can see is very black and kind of mushy, but it looks like this one has some pretty healthy roots. So it's not totally lost, which I'm very happy about. So I'm probably just going to repot this one into a smaller pot with some fresh soil and hopefully this one will do fine. I don't see any black or mushy looking roots on this one. So this plant should be just fine. Ta-da! I'm very happy that this one is doing okay because I just got this plant from Joyce and and so I would have been really upset if it was not doing well already and I wouldn't have been able to save it. So I will keep you guys updated on how this one is doing. Okay, the next plant I'm going to be potting up is this red calathea that I got from my mom's friend. Um, I'm just going to take it out. I don't know if it has any roots yet or not. Okay, so as you can see, it does already have some roots. So I think this pot might actually be too small for it. I think I'm just going to put it into this terracotta pot. Right there should be good.
Okay, so he's a little wobbly in this pot, which I think is just because he doesn't have enough roots to hold himself up. So what I'm going to do while he is kind of growing into the pot is put this in just right here and then clip it onto the stem. Just right there. And voila! I used to really not like Calathea because they've been really difficult for me to care for, which I think a lot of people can relate to the whole crisping tips on Calathea and them having to have really high humidity. But I think that if I keep it by my humidifier, it'll do fine. Hopefully because it's a bigger cutting, it'll be a little easier for it to establish itself and I won't have to watch it so much. Okay, so I got this plant from my mom. Um, no, let me restart. Okay, this plant is my mom's pink princess. This plant is my mom's pink princess. The pink print. This plant is my mom's pink princess philodendron. And I was over at her house just a few minutes ago. I just got home and um, I was looking at it and I noticed that its leaves are a little droopy. So I was like, oh, maybe it needs water. And so I went up and I touched the soil and my hand just like went straight through. It was so wet and mushy. And I was like, uh oh my. <laughs> I was like, oh no. And so I went and I dumped some of the water out and it's just not looking very well. So I told my mom about it and she said to, she wanted me to take it home and see if I can rehab it for her and try to, try to save it. So I'm just gonna dump out the soil and take a look at it and probably give it some fresh soil. Okay, so. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see in there at all, but that's just, that's just really wet soil. Like, mm. By the way, this was not my mom's doing. I don't wanna throw her under the bus. Um, she had a friend take care of them over the weekend while she was away. And um, this plant, this, friend I do not think is very experienced or she just didn't realize that this little piece was on the drainage hole and so the water wasn't like coming out anywhere so the water was just sitting there over the weekend so get the rest of that out okay now let's take a look at the roots oh I see a little bit of mush do you see Oh, see some of these roots, how dark they are. That is root rot. So, not all of them seem to look like that, but some of them definitely do. See, normally you would want roots that are a very bright white color and these, I don't know how well it's, how easy it is to see on camera because the dirt that's on it, but these are more of a like brownish kind of color. Um, so they're not like breaking apart super easy, which is a good sign. That means that they're not completely rotted. So I'll give it some fresh soil and see if I can save them. Oh, 
Okay, so I got him some fresh, dry soil, and I'm not going to water him for a couple days just so the soil that's in there can kind of absorb the extra moisture from the roots. And hopefully it'll undo some of the damage that it has from sitting in the super wet, muddy soil for a little bit. And then after a few days, then I'll give it a little bit of a water and I'm just gonna watch it and see how it does. So I got this Burl Marks Philodendron from the Crazy Plant Lady group that I was telling you guys about. And look at how big it is. I got it for only $20 and I am extremely happy about it. So what I'm going to do now is just wipe down the leaves to get kind of that hard water stains off of them. You can see this is its newest leaf, I think. And it is very beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe those down. Okay, so as I was wiping down all the leaves, I noticed a centipede crawling in the soil. And I think I also seen like some kind of fungus gnat or something, which is probably because this was outside for a while. So I'm just gonna go in with some diatomaceous earth and just sprinkle it on top of the soil. <clears throat> okay so this guy had spider mites for about a week and then i thought that i had gotten rid of them all but then i was looking and i don't know if this is focusing but if you can see those little red dots, those are the mites. And he's still losing a lot of leaves. Like if you look at the soil, he's lost a lot of leaves. And so I think what I'm gonna do now is take him to the sink and spray him off again. And then I'm gonna go outside, change out his soil, mix in some diatomaceous earth, and then just quarantine him. Um, probably outside, just because I don't know what else to do for him right now.
Okay, so as you guys can see, I am just about out of my neem oil spray, so I'm going to show you how I make more of it. So it's a really simple process. I just fill up the bottle with some water to about three quarters. Filled it to about there with water. Okay, and this is the neem oil I use. I got it off of Amazon. And it even comes with this little dropper thing. So I just take a few. And I do about five of these most of the time for this bottle. And then as you can probably see, it's kind of separated because water and oil don't mix very well. So before I go to use it, I always shake it up. Kind of mixes it in and then I can just start spraying. And I use this on any plants that I suspect may have pests. Any new plants I get just as a preventative. And so I use this on any plants that so I use this mix on any plants that I suspect may have pests, um, any new plants that I got to make sure that, they're, that I'm not bringing any pests in with them, and just as a preventative measure to make sure all my plants are pest free. Okay, and the last plant I wanted to talk about is this um, ZZ plant, which I've had for a while. I got it from Christine, who I'm plant sitting for, and it just hasn't grown for me at all. And so what I want to do is I want to cut it back quite a bit actually and see if that'll kind of promote some more growth. So I'm just going to cut off the stems that kind of are really bare and don't have much on them. Do that one. Oh. When I got this, some of them were chewed on by her cat, which is why she gave it to me because um, ZZ plants are toxic to cats and dogs, I believe, but I'm not sure. So she didn't want it to want them to uh, chew on it anymore. Which luckily I can have it on the floor, and Wallace doesn't mess with the, this plant specifically, so that's a good thing. Okay, so I think I cut it back enough. Um, I really just left these smaller ones that have more leaves on them. And so I'm just gonna probably give this guy a good water and then see if he does any better. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed coming along for these plant chores with me. Um, I feel like they were a little all over the place, but that's kind of how things go. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.